Today is Thursday of the fifth week of Lent, and our prayers and give us this day begin on page 33. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of your faithfulness, O Lord, forever. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your faithful love is established forever. Your fidelity stands firm as the heavens. With my chosen one I have made a covenant. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your descendants forever and set up your throne through all ages. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your fidelity to in the assembly of your holy ones. For who in the skies can compare with the Lord? Or who is like the Lord among the heavenly powers? a God to be feared in the counsel of the Holy Ones, great and awesome above all around him. How blessed the people who know your praise, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who find their joy every day in your name, who make your righteousness their joyful acclaim. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. What then can we say about Ab- that Abraham found? Let me begin again. What then can we say that Abraham found, our ancestor according to the flesh? Indeed, if Abraham was justified on the basis of his works, he has reason to boast. But this was not so in the sight of God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. A worker's wage is credited not as a gift, but as something due. But when one does not work, yet believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited as righteousness. The Word of the Lord. My reflection is going to go in a little different direction tonight because some of you have wondered, what do I do about confession during this time of physical distancing from each other? The issue is an important one for Catholics. So on the Catholic News Agency website, there's a very good article entitled, Can't Go to Confession During Coronavirus? Consider an act of perfect contrition. The writer, Jonah McKeon, has interviewed a Dominican theologian who answers this question and allays a great deal of confusion and fear. Let me offer you some of what that article conveys as my meditation this evening. When Catholics can't seek God's mercy in confession, the Church teaches that it is possible to repent in another way, through an act of perfect contrition. Perfect contrition is sorrow for one's sins based upon love for God, which includes the firm resolution not to commit them anymore. When contrition arises from a love by which God is loved above all else, 
Contrition is called perfect. That's what the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches. The Catechism explains that perfect contrition remits venial sins. It also obtains forgiveness of mortal sins if it includes the firm resolution to have recourse to sacramental confession as soon as possible. Imperfect contrition, which is also known as attrition, which is sorrow for one's sins based upon the fear of punishment, is actually sufficient for a priest to absolve you in the confessional, but not enough to obtain the forgiveness of mortal sin without sacramental confession to a priest. That's how the Catechism explains it. Practically, there are two things a Catholic must do. The first is to pray an act of contrition out of love for God. Being sorry out of love for God has often been described as having a desire to be reunited to God because of who he is, because of God's perfect love for us, and because of sorrow for having offended God by sin. It means wanting to live in unity with God and to put aside the sins that stand in the way. There is no set formula for making an act of contrition, but a common one reads as follows. My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. The second thing then, a Catholic must also make a firm commitment to go to confession when that becomes possible. Of course, I can't judge any of this. All of this is the church teaching based on what we understand to be God's relationship with you deeply within your hearts. Some come to confession as it is a simple as if it were a simple transaction. I will announce my sins, the priest will offer me penance and absolution, I go on my merry way. This is all about the deepest part of one's being and how one opens one's heart fully to God and how the church assists in that, in the forgiveness of sin. So an act of perfect contrition is not a replacement for the sacrament of penance, because the sacrament of penance remains the sole ordinary means for the forgiveness of mortal sins after baptism. Contrition is ultimately about conversion, which means turning away from attachment to sin and turning towards the sacraments, which ultimately means turning toward Christ. Pope Francis last week encouraged Catholics confined to their homes to ask God for forgiveness and then to go to confession when they are able. You do what the Catechism says, he said. It is very clear. If you do not find a priest to hear your confession, speak to God. He is your Father and tell him the truth. Promise him, later I will confess, but forgive me now. And immediately you will return to the grace of God. I am one of those confined Catholics, and I am one of those who has no immediate accessibility to the sacrament of reconciliation as a penitent. So I know how you're feeling. Trust that God wants what is best for you, despite the privations and struggles of the present moment. I join you in looking forward to the time when we can meet again freely and celebrate all the sacraments together. Now we'll pray the canticle with Mary. Abraham's descendants are those who follow the example of his faith. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their own conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Abraham's descendants are those who follow the example of his faith. God of our ancestors, you reveal yourself as wisdom and love. In confidence we pray, let us find our joy in you, O God. Open our eyes to the beauty that surrounds us and inspire us to care for creation. Let us find our joy in you, O God. Free our hearts from past hurts, worries, and false judgments. Let us find our joy in you, O God. Welcome into the light of your face all who have died with their hope fixed on you. Let us find our joy in you, O God. Now let us spend a moment together in silence as we consider the prayers and the needs of our hearts. In confidence we pray, let us find our joy in you, O God. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May God strengthen our faith and lead us along the way of everlasting life in Jesus, our brother. Amen. As always, have a peaceful night.